Well, hello! Fun and excitement again this morning when I picked up a, a very exciting package from the post office. It is the Baby Hawk R, where the R is the racing edition. I didn't have the original edition, but this looked a lot of fun. This has come from Banggood, thanks very much for them. Um, and I've really been looking forward to uh, testing this for quite a while. A lot of people rate it very highly, uh, and I want to know if it does better than well, what I figure is the previous winner of the two-inch war. A couple of likely suspects, but I tend to think that the uh, the Diatone GTR 90 is probably the best of the two-inch quads that I've flown all round. Uh, so it'd be good to see how this compares. Can it take the crown? In my opinion, of course. But let's get it out and see what's in there. It is well packaged in that phone there, where you can barely see it. And we have here the little baby hawk itself. What's quite different about this one is this uh, this little plastic body shell that uh, comes over and protects it quite nicely. Looks like it does well from Knox. This is the uh, Free Sky edition, but we're looking at 1106 motors. We've got the Foxeer Micro Arrow camera, so a micro CCD. We've got an F3 omnibus style board, and ESCs can run BL Heli S. Uh, just 12 amps, uh, and presumably they can run DSHOT 600, I'll be checking that. Elsewhere in the box we have some other bits. We have the little OSD thing for the camera. We have, looks like an alternative power thing. That's a JST in there. Obviously we've got uh, an XT30 there. I think we run this on 3S. I don't know if it's 4S compatible, but I really haven't got any batteries small enough. So 3S is what we go for. And we've got two sets of these little props. We also give you a little bag of screws, instructions for the Foxy camera, instructions for the quad itself. Mainly talking about how to change the VTX frequency. That's quite interesting. One of the things I noticed about it, got a capacitor soldered in on the battery terminal, and often we end up putting these in afterwards to try and smooth out some video. So it'd be interesting to see if this is really nice from the get-go. Of course, this being a, a bind and fly, I'm, I'm really interested to see just how it do just out of the box. So the idea is to be like, do the very basic setup on beta flight, sort the SD out, just check how it's set, uh, and, and change very little and basically see how it flies. I suppose one differentiator between this and the GTR 90 is, I mean, this this was bind and fly, so it comes with a little D8 compatible, so I'm not expecting a huge amount of range in there, whereas I put uh, an XM Plus in the uh, GTR 90, so that's obviously got a wide amount of range. But yeah, let's get this configed up on Betaflight. Flight. Let's um, do the settings, do get it bound, and then take it for a fly and see how it goes. Catch me in the field. So Betaflight, it's running the 323 version of the firmware and I didn't want to touch anything so it runs a 4K 4K loop. The only thing I did here is I enabled motor stop because that's what I like and I also turned air mode so I could put it on a switch rather than having it on all the time as that's just personal preference to me. The pit tuning I had some work done there. I had my normal super rate there of 0.8 although this has an RC rate of 1.1 which makes it a little bit more aggressive so I'll, I'll try that out. On the receiver tab, I set my endpoints and sub trims so they were perfect, and I noticed it already had an RSSI channel assigned, which was quite nice. Modes wise, this is what it looked like originally. I changed it about to my own liking. And finally, the OSD screen, which is actually pretty sensible. Normally, these things are absolutely cluttered with stuff, but this was quite minimal. I, I set this up to my, my normal thing again. Well, hello from the field. We're here today checking out the little Baby Hawk R, the two inch edition. Now I found out there is a three inch version as well. And uh, just well, it's come out a bit cloudy and stuff, but really humid, and I'm sweating because I've just been in the following field talking to another guy who's flying a 5-inch quad who uh, I sort of randomly met a few weeks ago when he was here. I just need to make sure we're on different channels. So, yeah, we'll do the normal. Let's give it a little line sight hover, and then let's take it around this field. Really looking forward to seeing what this can do because I hear nothing but good things about it, so fingers are crossed. Well, somewhat frustratingly, this isn't arming properly, and it just goes to show, when I say this is my first line of sight hover, I really do mean it. So, on the bench, I checked my modes, I sorted out my receiver, I actually spanned the motors up on the motor tab just to check that out, but I didn't actually do it with the controller, so obviously I've either overlooked something or not saved something. I can tell you that um, the modes are changing, but the actual quad itself isn't arming. When I try an arm, I will show you what happens. So here's my arm switch. We get a rather rude beeping and obviously nothing on the throttle. You can see the thing has an arm there. I don't know what it is, but I thought it useful to show you the beeping so I can sort this out. And if you get that beep in, then you'll know what it is, hopefully, when I sort it. 
So I'd gone through and changed the OSD to my liking, but one thing that I hadn't put on, which I'd normally have, is the warnings. And I put this on just to see what would happen when I armed, to see what that actual warning would be. And I had an inkling it was throttle. I actually tried trimming the throttle down, but that didn't seem to do anything. But yeah, sure enough, it said throttle. And even when I put the throttle percentage on the screen, I could see it showing there as 0%, but it would still say throttle when I tried to arm. So what was the problem? It was this. If we look back at the minimum stick threshold and the maximum, it's on 1,000, 2,000, which might seem sensible, but this is the what's called the min check value. It's nothing to do with the minimum throttle. It means that your throttle must be under this value before it will arm. And of course, I'd set the endpoints up perfectly so the bottom would be 1,000. But that's not below 1000, that's exactly on it, so that's not going to work. Now normally they're actually set at 1100 and 1900, and on this quad they were set here. So I thought this was a, a useful thing just to show, just in case uh, anybody else hit this problem. It's just a case of changing it back. Now don't worry, you're not going to lose resolution here. Min check is just a value that the throttle must be before. It doesn't mean that the throttle starts at 1100, it means that it will arm prior to 1100. Your actual minimum throttle value is, is determined by min throttle, which is a completely different value. So anyway, with that fixed, let's get back to the line of sight. Well, as you can probably hear, it wasn't without wind that day. There was, there was plenty of gusty breezes coming along. But yeah, it flew around nicely. I did a couple of little punches and it looked really responsive. Um, and it just handled really well, so I bought it down, ready to do some FPV. Off we go on our maiden flight, and I just thought I'd show a couple of these fly paths, because they really do show the uh, the speed this thing can travel at. It's really quite rapid. Now, I did a bunch of flight, and sometimes the battery was really rubbish. This is from battery number three, which I'm going to base it on, which was a half-decent Ishin 550 free cell. Uh, and I've had a good few flights with it, well, two flights previously, and I'm pretty happy in how it's going. I have to say, it just felt out of the box super smooth. So this is a good one for showing what it can do and it can't do. So that split S attempt through those trees, because this thing's so light, I kind of didn't have enough inertia to, to carry on when I, when I sort of inverted. Um, so you just have to fly a little bit different because it hasn't got the weight behind it like a big 5 inch has and that just takes a little bit of getting used to. But you can pretty much do anything with it. It just flies around really happy, really very agile and so smooth. I couldn't believe how smooth this was out of the box for something this big. Now this is on the 25 milliwatt setting and you can see that you know that's going to create an issue but you can change it to 200 milliwatts. And something I needed to do, which I hadn't done, was to set the battery alarm value a little bit lower. So this starts alarming on 10.5, which is a bit high for this sort of battery. Now, I did go out and try that out-of-the-box setting, which had a, the um, RC rate of 1.1 with um, a super rate of 0.8. And that was, that was okay. It just threw my timing off. So I changed it back to a normal RC rate of 1.0, keeping the super rate of 0.8, because pretty much that's all I did. Now here's the split S going in with a little bit more inertia to carry through, and it, it works a, a bit better. It's just, I was flying a, a five inch the day before, a particularly heavy one, and uh, it was obviously a little bit different. But this, oh, I can't, I couldn't get over quite how smooth this was. I mean, there's lots of things about it which feels brilliantly like a two inch the the way you can pretty much turn on a, a dime just instantly but the smoothness in the air that feels like you're flying a, a bigger more substantial quad and as i said this was not a windless day um it was conquering the wind brilliantly i i wasn't at all convinced those props when i saw them but i've got absolutely no complaints the whole thing is just working perfectly even that receiver, which I was very worried about, and having the RSSI value really helps. Um, it was getting to the end of this field. I mean, it's it's under 200 meters, but it's still quite reasonable. I was just having so much fun that I didn't want to stop, even though you can see my battery suffering here. I should never get low like this. I mean, I'm, I'm touching the, the 9.9s and I'm, I should have landed already. But yeah, I was enjoying myself too much to land and I was like well screw the battery what the hell I'm just I'm just gonna do it but um, just to show you that I could land 
and what the camera angle was like. It's fairly aggressive camera angle. Um, I think something like about 30, 35 degrees I was flying with. You you have to be kind of careful when you come in, but of course you can just uh, let the throttle go and pop it down on the ground because the thing weighs next to nothing. But that was insanely good fun. And I will just say right now, off the bat, this is now my new favorite two inch quad. And you know, there's a lot of two inch quads that come out, so it might not be that way forever. But right now, this is just beautiful out of the box. And that's the thing. I mean, don't get me wrong, the little Diatone GTR 90 flew really nicely, has a lot of good features on it, but we still had to mess around with it. We had to change out those awful Diatone props. You had to install your own receiver before you could really get going. Um, this is just a case of binding it and flying it. Yeah, I had those issues with the throttle setting, uh, but that was relatively simple to sort out and didn't involve any changing stuff. I had no faith in these props when I saw them, let me tell you. I just looked at them and said, these look a weird shape, I've never seen anything like them. And went out there and it was smooth as you like. I was pretty amazed just how well this performed. Now, perhaps it's all about the motors. I've never had a pair of the Emacs Red Bottom motors. I missed all the hype on those ones. But man, this smooth is the, the thing I'm always going to come back and say. I could feel it in, in the rolls. I'd, I'd do a roll and then I'd just come off a little bit and you'd just see it smoothly slow down on the end of it. Just, just like flying a really nicely tuned um, bigger quad. So I suppose that one of the, the weak points on this one is going to be this little D8 compatible receiver. A, you can't use D8 mode if, you're, if you've got like um, a European Tyrannus. B, the, the range is limited. But as far as D8 receivers go, this was pretty good. It actually had telemetry. So you had a proper RSI signal so you, you could at least tell when you were starting to lose range. And inside that, not a great big field, a smallish field where I was, just messing around there was, was fine. And that's, I suppose, a couple of hundred meters. Um, if you're gonna fly this further away, um, obviously you're gonna to need to replace that. And something like a, an XM Plus will fit in there and give you a lot more range. I, I thought as well about swapping over in terms of having the VTX coming upwards and the receiver downwards. I, I decided that having a better signal on the receiver based on the fact it was a, a D8 compatible was better, but certainly get a better picture going upwards. I mean, that was on 25 milliwatts and you could see it wipe out behind the uh, the bushes there, but that changes to 200 if you want to. And that, that's not bad actually. There's there's a little button in there which you can, you can get to with a pokey thing to change channels, power and band relatively easily, so that, that that's good. Camera on this was excellent as well. One thing I did, when I, when I bound it, because you have to take the top off to get to the bind button, which is a bit of a pain, although it's just two screws, those two screws, and the, the, the plastic top section comes off. I also noticed on the little micro CCD camera, there was the little um, cable ready, so you could just plug the OSD in, and I was able to go in there and, and double check it had WDR on, which it did, and a night mode, night mode set to color, which is one thing I like. Camera works really nicely, actually. CCDs, nice micro ones that are becoming the norm now, which is fantastic. They, it's just so, so much better than the CMOS versions. Now, I, I have a source of apology to make here. Um, the batteries I was using on this were pretty bad. I had two 350 milliamp free S's, which were poor, but not too bad. I, I could fly them. Weight on those ones is about right. I had a 550 uh, Ishim one, which was pretty good. Uh, that's the one I almost murdered by. It's like it's saying land now. I was like, yeah, no, I'm having too much fun here. Uh, th that landed on something like nine point, under 9.9 .9 anyway. <laughs> that wasn't good. Um, and some awful XF one I tried, which is just a, a nightmare and it was far too big. Um, I, I think I was guilty at, at this point in saying I need to try some new batteries. As far as like getting 1300 milliamp hour, 4S batteries, like the world's your oyster. I'm just a, a little bit more constrained about getting smaller 3S's and 4S's with an XT30. Um, and this takes a 4S um, as well as a 3S, but I need to get some more. And I, I was going to get some more on the last review I did where I said I have to get some more batteries. And then there were new international shipping restrictions on LiPo batteries, so I haven't. But I'm going away on holiday. As soon as I come back, I'm going to buy a bunch more uh, 3S and 4S. Uh, small lipos with XT30s just for flying these things because you really do need a decent few batteries to get to get the most out of them, which which I'm guilty of not having. So I will I will amend that 
but I have to look for stuff I can get inside the UK, which I think is going to be probably tattoo batteries, which I can get from one supplier. I'll, I'll have to have a look around. If, if you're in the UK and you know where to get some stuff, for, chuck it in the bottom for me. I'll, I'll, I'll check it out if I can have a look-see. Now, I mentioned 4S. You can fly this on 4S, but the, the other thing of note, and I noticed this on the box first, where it says here, there is a two inch and three inch option. And I do notice that they use the same foam. So this slightly larger thing is for the three inch props and the, the slightly larger things are for the extra length arms. Um, and I noticed Painless 360 did a, a great review of the three inch one. And I was like, wait, there's a three inch one? And the, the interesting thing is it's almost the same. Almost the same, but not quite. Now, the reason I'm showing you this section of the product spec, which was in the manual in the two inch version I got, was you see there, it actually says that the motors are the same between the two. And I'd already edited this video recording a big section saying, wow, that's amazing. All you have to do is swap the legs out and you can have a whole new three inch quad, you know, along with the props. But actually the motors on the three inch are 4,500 kV and they're 6,000 kV on the two inch. So yeah, you can still convert between a two inch and a three inch and vice versa, but you need the motors and the legs, which is not quite as convenient because you know you can't just simply swap that out. That, that involves soldering 12 connections of the uh, motor wires every time you want to do it. So yeah, it's a one shot situation. But I'm excited with the possibility that you could like get it on a two inch or a three inch and potentially say, okay, I've had enough of this. I want to go with something else and fly it completely differently. And you definitely, on the three inch, want to fly 4S, something like maybe between a 650. I, I generally fly an 850 on a, a three inch and it works really well. But like I said, I'm gonna get a bunch more batteries. If I can get the replacement arms, which don't seem available at the moment, I might try swapping this over and see how it is. Because it was so, so good as a two inch, best two inch ever. I'm, I'm wondering, is it the best three inch ever? I mean, it'll have to beat the mighty Jep RC Sparrow, in my opinion, is just, a cracking quad but this is really nice this is <laughs> this is such a cool little quad really good thing in this one which wasn't available in the gtr 90 is it's got an inbuilt beeper absolutely needed on a quad this size they can disappear in anything i mean the grass in the field i use has been cut short this will still disappear under short grass it's that small but luckily it has a beeper and that makes finding it much much easier uh, the only thing I'm going to change on this one at the moment is to set my battery alarm a little bit lower because like start bleeping at 10.5 um, is, is a bit OTT for this. I'm going to I'm going to bring it right down to 9.9 .9 because as often times I will dip below quite a lot when doing something big and then it, it will recover. But yeah, I loved flying this. It's maneuverable. It just it just feels so smooth. I'll say it again. It's a smooth, smooth flyer. So I really, really liked it. As soon as I get some better batteries or more batteries, I want to go out and fly it some more because it's so much fun. I was just only disappointed the fact I couldn't fly it some more. So we need to remedy that now. This review has been about the Emacs Baby Hawk R two inch edition. And this was kindly provided by Banggood. And so you'll find links down below where you can check it out on their page. Um, also check out Painless's uh, review of the three inch because that looks a beautiful prospect as well. Anyway, I hope that was helpful and I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.